What is up, guys? T here, bringing you the very first episode of our Madden 24 franchise here in Madden 24. And as you see, we're doing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this year. You know, some of the reason I picked the team was the quarterback situation. You know, we got Baker Mayfield on a one-year deal, prove it deal here on Bucks. Hopefully to, you know, keep some sustainable of consistency on this team. You know, the GOAT, Tom Brady, retired for the second time on this team. And, you know, there's there's a void to fill. But I'm not one to say that, hey, this team has fallen off drastically from their previous Super Bowl success, you know. So Baker on this one-year deal doesn't guarantee that he's going to be the future of this team. I am a coach that whoever our starting quarterback is to start the year, I'm going to give him every opportunity to be successful to the best of my ability. But I do have, you know, plans and circumstances set up. So if Baker does good, he gets a second contract and kind of be that bridge guy. And we draft a guy, you know, late in the draft or, you know, we, we draft a guy, period, and have him develop behind Baker. If Baker isn't the guy and this team isn't successful, perfect. We own our draft pick. We draft, you know, the QB of the future, and we rock out from there. If Baker, the team's good, but Baker isn't, you know, playing up to par, I have, you know, some guys that I have in mind to go after, to trade, sign, whatever the case may be, to bring in a quarterback that can push us to that next level to play up to the par of the rest of the team. While I say that, you know, I'm always thinking this team is going to be, have to be rebuilt from the bottom up. From the bottom down, I mean. So, if it comes to a point where, hey, we're not competing, we're not even going to be even having a chance to win the division, I'm willing to move on past Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Why is that? Because Mike Evans... X-Factor, great wide receiver, one of the most consistent wide receivers in NFL history, let's be honest. No matter who his quarterback is, he's going to get 1,000 yards. He's going to get touchdowns. He's going to be successful. So with that, he deserves a chance to go be on a competing team. He's got a championship, but he deserves to be on a competing team. Chris Godwin is in his prime. He also deserves to be on a competing team. He's 27. I think Mike Evans, let's double check, is 21, not 20, 30. I know he's 30, 31. So it's about a three-year gap. They both deserve to be on the competing teams on this team. If they do leave, we have to bring in some wide receivers or hopefully get, you know, some young wide receivers back in the trades. If not... Kate Otten is definitely going to be a weapon with or without them on the team. Kate Otten's young. I feel like he's going to be our tight end for the future. So I'm excited to get to use Kate Otten. Same with Rashad White, young running back. He's got the clear-cut ability to, you know, lead our team in the running back situation. Not saying we won't have, a you know, a little bit of running back co by committee just in case Edmonds gets some good touches and he can show out or if we draft a guy or sign a guy to kind of have depth and he balls out too, hey, no problem. But Rashad White, you get every opportunity to be the lead back on this team. Defense side of the ball is where we're going to have to make our, you know, money at. Because we got studs or good guys at almost every position. Either they're good and sustainable or they're great, like Vita Vea, Derek White. Uh, Levante David, Shaq Barrett, you know, Winfield Jr. Like, we got guys all over the field. But once again, moving pieces on this team, if the team isn't successful, we got to start freeing up some cap. This has a lot of, you know, capture strength to it. Levante David, easy move on. Great player. He's 33. He's getting towards the end of his career. Derek White 
it's clear cut can step up and be a running uh linebacker one. You know, we bring in a bridge guy, we bring in a young guy, and he'd be linebacker two, no problem. I can see that for our future. Shaq Barrett, another big cap hit, great player, but he's in his thirties. You know, if we trade him, we could bring in a young guy, a bridge guy for the pass rush, and I could see that, you know, benefiting our future. Having money to spread over the team multiple years. Got a young, lot of young guys. Um, I can't remember. I think Via Veda has gotten paid. But if not, we're going to have to pay Via. He's a run-stuffing machine. And he's low-key kind of quick. For a big boy, he moves around. <laughs> hey. But we got... Um, I want to pronounce his name. Kalaji Kansi as our, another young pass rusher. I feel like this team has a lot of promise to it. So if the team isn't good to start off, we have moving pieces to start our rebuild drastically. If not, we can ball out. I feel like Baker has the opportunity to ball out and maybe maybe if he even balls out, but I still want to move on from him, hey, go get that bag, Baker, if a team's willing to give it to you. Special teams, you know, we got good punter, good kicker, guys that can get us to where we need to get to when it comes to scoring and being consistent. As long as they want to take team-friendly deals, they can stay on this team for the rest of their careers. Plug and play, set. I'm not going to worry too much about the special teams. But uh, something that I do notice on this team as I was you know, diving into the rosters is... Besides Dean and Davis, we have no good cornerbacks, you know, behind them. So number one thing is we have to free up some cap to go sign some corners in free agency to help us start off the year with at least some relevance of corners behind them, you know, for the, you know, nickel, dime, you know, injuries, got some guys behind them ready to play. So let's go see if we can clear some cap up. All righty. I took a look at the team, and there wasn't too many restructures that we could do to free up some money besides Shaq Barrett. So we're already starting off the franchise by trading Shaq Barrett to the division rival Falcons. We're sending Shaq a fourth this coming year, and, a, and we swap picks with them in the fifth round in 2025. And we get Bud Dupree on a one-year deal to fill in Shaq's vacant position. And we get Trey Flowers coming over in the deal, too. I think he's also on a one-year deal. So we're getting two rentals, and we swap picks in the fifth round to free up all the cap we need to also, you know, one, just have cap, and two, we also fill in our cornerback position. So I think this is beneficial for us. On both sides. All right, with our freed up cap right now, we're going to also be bringing in William Jackson and uh, add just a little more depth to our running back, our uh, running back, our cornerback position on this team. One year deal, $2.7 million, 33 years old. Got to kind of help with the depth on this team. Also, to add depth, we're throwing a dart at the board. We're signing Kenny Galladay. He did not have a good tenure. With the Giants, but having them come in be another depth piece on this team. We also need a right tackle if we're going to really try to keep Baker the best successful as he can this season. So we're signing Marcus Gannon to a one-year deal, veteran line man, and hopefully just can able to acknowledge his knowledge across the old line and be sustainable and healthy for the rest of the year. All right, guys, little post calm. I did talk about I was going to play all the game, all the preseason games, but I decided to said I played this first preseason game against the Steelers, and I've seen enough of like who I like and don't like on this team and like the promise of the you know backups. So I just show the highlights of the preseason game against the Steelers, and we'll jump into regular season week one, you know, in the next episode.